Hello everyone. I wanted to delve again into the world of creating, uh, well, worlds using the Spry Tile plugin in Blender and also creating some spray graphics. Uh, here I decided, you know, uh, we spent a lot of time creating that overworld, or at least uh, in a house in a sort of a natural environment, and we created that little cave with that little door into the cave. So I th was thinking, you know, what would happen if we went through that door? What kind of you no know, cavern would we see in there? So this is my attempt to try to figure that out. Uh, you can see me creating a two very basic uh, sprite textures here. I got a ground and a wall. And now I'm just sort of building up sort of a 3D world with it. And if you look on the sort of left side there, I uh, tried to put in some steps. Uh, it was the, uh, it's, it's not so easy to go quarter steps with this plugin, but it is possible. So here's uh, another attempt I came up with. I was still thinking about steps here and how to make steps. So this time I went for a ramp. So there you can see the ramp coming out of the bottom floor there. But uh, it's, these two uh, textures are similar enough that it becomes really hard to tell the difference between the two. So here I am trying to create a border between the two that we can use to sort of mark the difference. And here you see me putting in that border there, just sort of like a little rock border that gives you the, the lighter rock against the darker rock. So you can tell the walls from the ground or yeah for the ground that much more easily and uh, here I am doing the inside corners so that it's you have some signal when you have a, a, a concave angle because you don't need much but uh, if you don't have it then you have this little gap uh, if you can see that corner where it's uh, turning the inside corner there just having a little signal there for the eyes to see that uh, it is kind of continuous there. Now here I'm trying to create sort of a tunnel that goes into the distance here. I just want to see what it'd be like to try to have someone leave through the north wall here. And that is going to be uh, excavated a little bit. I'm going to put a bit of a tunnel or well, a bit of a river there a little bit later. And yeah, here I am creating the river tile because I want to have a little bit of a water going through this underground cave because right now it's all kind of brown and this the same color so uh, I guess with caves it is largely the same color but you know adding a little bit of color is nice so having this nice little uh, blue bluish green to offset the uh, dull orangish brown I think just uh, it brings it to life a little bit in any case uh, one of the big things I was concerned with is how do you create cave walls that look like walls because when you're using this uh spry tile uh this well this um plugin that does uh, one square at a time you do kind of get boxy uh looking outlines now i tried to fix this a little bit if you can see there i had sort of a little angle going in the rivers there and you can do that with the um mountains too but that's, it's a lot of work to do that. It's a whole lot more work than just uh, painting the uh, the squares in. So I was trying to get something to work with uh, just the squares. Uh, and you can kind of get something like uh, you get in a game like Minecraft. Although it's not as, it's not as easy to paint. Uh, well, with, with Minecraft or a program like that, a voxel program, you're essentially placing one block at a time, whereas with Sprite Hall, you're placing one face at a time, so it makes it a little bit harder to do shapes that curve at all. However, uh, you can rough in walls and floors really quickly, which makes it so nice and so much easier to use than just uh, modeling with boxes and uh, the tools that come a little bit more naturally with a 3D program like this. Anyhow, at this point, I didn't like the uh, rock wall texture too much, so I decided to go for something a little bit more vertical. So this is supposed to look like uh, sort of a dirt uh, wall, or well, maybe not dirt, it's supposed to be rock, but something a little bit more like columns, like little columns, as opposed to what I had before, which was like a lot of uh, tiny ledges. And here I decided to put in a little bit of a uh, dirt patch in the middle of the floor because I wanted a little bit of variety there. It's, uh, at the moment you have these large solid 
uh, areas of the same tile texture for the floor and having a little area where that can uh, be, well, just change color. It uh, adds a nice variety. And here I was thinking of uh, adding a bridge. It would be nice for people to be able to cross over that bridge. At first I wanted to, at first I tried just uh, putting in a single tile, but I wanted something a little bit more three-dimensional. So here's me actually creating a uh, wooden plank texture and we're uh, building a bridge out of that. Now I'm putting a couple of little posts to either side of the uh, plank bridge to sort of indicate how it's attached to the shore because otherwise it looks like it's just kind of floating in space there. But uh, here is my uh, first attempt to uh, add a little bit of woodwork. And that went so bad. Oh, uh, no, what I'm doing here is I'm replacing those posts because uh, I started with square posts. I thought uh, octagonal, no, hexagonal, that's right. Hexagonal posts might look better. That's to say six-sided posts. Uh, it just looks a little bit rounder. And then I was thinking, you know, what if there was some um, lattice in the uh, caves here? Like some workmen came in here and built a whole lot of... Um, scaffolding that people could walk on. So here I'm thinking of uh, trying to put some scaffolding together. I'm uh, reusing that wood texture to create wooden planks and uh, little uh, poles to uh, support everything. And this just gives you a little bit more variety of places you can go beyond uh, just walking on this, the stone floor. And I was thinking that this, uh, this has to merge with the background and being underground, the background is going to be solid black, but if you just leave those edges rough, then you're going to see this hard outline between uh, the edge of the stone and the black background. So I decided to uh, have this sort of tapering effect from the stone into the um, into the into the darkness. So I came up with this black edge tile that you can use to just uh, make it look like you have this gradient going off into the distance. And you're going to see me painting that onto the edge of the stones here. And in the final you'll be able to see what it actually looks like with the black. Uh, I wasn't able to figure out how to make the, uh, the uh, back of the viewport look black uh, with uh, Blender 2.79. So you're just going to have to imagine it for now. I certainly did. Anyhow, uh, I was talking about that cave earlier. Now that uh, the water is being extended back and I decided to put in a second passage next to the cave just so we have a little bit of variety in what it looks like to go back into the distance there. At this point I'm just taking the ideas I've already developed and extending them a little bit uh, to create sort of a full, a full scene here, you know? because we can't have the scene simply st stop in the front. I'm adding a little, a few rises in the foreground to give the idea that there, there is stuff lifting up in the foreground. And uh, so you come into the scene, you're just not looking down at it. Well, I want to put some stuff in the foreground. And uh, finally, I thought, you know, we're in an underground cave, we, we're exploring what you find in like RPG caves, treasure chests. So here I'm thinking of how to make a treasure chest, and this is my first attempt. And I uh, just created a box and I divided it, and then I uh, made it a little bit angular. And I added the solidify modifier here, but if you can see uh, from this view here, the solidify modifier is sort of poking things up in the middle. Uh, I didn't like that so much. So here's my second attempt, just starting with the box, and I'm putting my texture in all the sides of the box. And now I'm fiddling with the sides to get sort of an, an arched roof, so you just sort of have a, a trunk style chest. And now I'm uh, just re, uh, remapping the UVs. And uh, yeah, that is the scene. And if you look at it here, you can uh, see an overhead view of the scene. And well, that was one session's work. Um, it was a lot of fun. I'm getting into this. I'm still learning a lot, but I think I'm making okay progress for now. Uh, the, this particular scene with the cave I thought was a little bit dull, uh, too much brown, and even even though the blue helped a little bit, it's, it's still a dull blue. So anyhow, uh, much more to learn. Uh, a lot that uh, I learned just in this session. I hope you liked watching this, and uh, well, come back next time if you'd like to see more.